In this video you will learn how electric power is defined and how this is related to the concept of work being performed in a circuit. You will also learn how the power law connects the variables of current and voltage and you will also see how you can easily derive this famous formula which states that power is the product of voltage and current. And as always, there's going to be a summary of the most important facts at the end of the video, so stay tuned. And my name is Andreas from The Fearless Engineer and here we go. Before we dive more deeply into the concepts of power in this video, let's briefly talk about a general definition. And if you look it up on Wikipedia, for example, it says that, that in physics, power is the amount of energy which is transferred or converted per time unit. So power brings into the game the unit of time, which tells us something about the length of the process over which a certain energy is used up or is converted into something else, is transferred. Before we dive uh, into the, uh, the definition of power, let's quickly recap some items from previous videos which we need for this video here. The first is that the electric field, which we talked about in several other videos before, performs work on free charge carriers, such as electrons, for example, in a circuit, an electrical circuit, and converts potential energy into kinetic energy. Second is that the work performed on charge carriers is the product of charge, field strength, and the length of the path traveled in the electric field. So we have talked about this analogy between the, uh, between the uh, electric circuit and let's say an apple hanging from a tree, and the apple in the tree has a certain potential energy as well as the electron in the electric field. There are great similarities between the two, and this also applies to the concept of work, which is closely related to this definition of potential energy, because the potential energy, when the apple drops, is converted into kinetic energy, and this conversion process, this is what we call work in this context. And the same holds true for the electrons in the electric field. The last item before we start is the um, term work, which you should know does not contain any information about the period of time during which it was performed, which is what I was talking about when we looked at this um, broad definition of, of power. So power brings into the game this definition of time over which a certain work is performed. And now we have all the knowledge ready to start into the main part of this video here. Now let's start this with an example. Say you wanted to transport this basket full of apples into this barn here. And um, obviously, if I would do it, I would uh, need a certain amount of time, which would be rather large, probably. And if you compare it to a well-trained farmhand who is doing this um, all over the harvesting season, he or she would be much, much faster than I was. So if we were not only looking at the amount of apples being transferred to the barn, which in both cases would be equal, uh, but we would also take into account the time somebody needed to transport this basket of apples into the barn, we of course would arrive at very different values of the of the um, quality of the work which was being performed. If, let's say, the trained farmhand needed 10 minutes to do this and I needed half an hour to do this, um, obviously there would be a great difference between the two. And that's the idea of power. The power describes the work which is performed in a certain period of time and the greater the time period, the smaller is the power itself. So you can see it in this equation, what, what's meant by this. Um, we take a certain amount of work, which would be the task to transport the basket full of apples. We normalize it on the time needed to perform this work. And this gives us the definition of power. We abbreviate power with P, work with W as before, and obviously T is time. And if you now compare the two, um, the two, um, the two persons transporting the apples, one needs 10 minutes, the other needs 20 minutes, obviously the power applied by the first person is larger than the power applied by the second person. Well, let's look at electric power. You can see two electrical devices here. One is a motor, the other one is a hairdryer. And we can say that the power of an electrical device relates to the work that can be performed by this device in a certain period of time. And the electrical power is also designated by the letter P, just as before with a basket full of apples. And um, the unit which we use, um, you might recall that these uh, brackets here, the angular brackets, that they give you the unit of um, the uh, parameter in between the brackets and the unit of power is of course the watt. 
um, named after James Watt, the very famous English engineer. And um, you can also express the power by dividing joules by the time. So we divide energy by time, joules per second. These two can both be used um, also in electrical engineering. Now let's look at the power law, which you might have heard of before, let's say in physics class in school. This power law has been postulated by James Watt, this famous English engineer who was also very active in uh, improving the steam engine back in the day. And um, he expresses in his power law the, uh, the power P as the product of current and voltage. So P equals um, power equals voltage times current. And the question now is, which we want to answer is, how can the power law be derived from the relationships we have previously discussed between work and current and voltage? If you are a little bit unsure about how these two are defined, current and voltage, you might want to uh, take a look at the videos which I, which I recorded before, where we um, provide a general definition of the two, but also um, a lengthy derivation of how we can arrive at these two parameters here. And if you have a sound understanding of current and voltage, you will have no trouble uh, linking them both to the concept of work and, and also power. Okay, so let's look at how we can derive the power law, the famous power law, power equals current times voltage. Um, in the first step, we start with work in the electric field, which we talked about at length before in the video on, on energy, um, which you might have watched. If not, let's briefly recap the equation, which you can see here. We have seen in this video that the work being performed on, let's say, an electron within the electric field is the product of the charge of this electron, might even be larger charges, but Q denotes the amount of charge, uh, the product of charge and the electric field, which might be generated by a battery, and the length delta L, which a charge, for example, might move within the electric field from one position to the next. And this product between these three parameters can also be expressed as the product of power times the amount of time delta T. And in case you might be wondering where uh, where this comes from, this is exactly the equation we have been talking about on the slide with a basket full of apples, where we have found that the power, um, for example, applied by the skilled farmhand um, was the, the ratio between um, work being performed, which is carrying the basket full of apples, divided by the time it took to, to finish this, this work. So by um, equalizing these two sides here, we get a very convenient definition where all the parameters which we need to approach the power law at the bottom of the slide are already present. And now we can isolate the power, bring it to the left in the second step, um, you can find it here. And if you do this, you get this ratio, product of charge and electric field and the length the charge is moved divided by the time t. And we can now replace this product of um, electric field and length by the voltage. And in order to understand how this can be done, you might want to watch the video on the definition of, of voltage. So this uh, product here can be replaced by voltage. And if you now look closely, we already have um, one or two of the essential parameters in place. We have the power, we have the voltage. What's missing to arrive at the power law is the um, current flowing through, let's say, the cable, for example. And if you look closely, this is the charge. This is the time. We have the ratio of charge per time. And this is exactly the definition of current. So if we now replace charge per time with current, if we replace this fraction here by the current I, we arrive automatically at the power law, um, which is exactly the place where we wanted to go on this slide. So P equals current times voltage. Okay, now let's quickly recap the most important items from this video here. Let's summarize the major takeaways. The first is power describes the work being performed in a given period of time, which is what which is what uh, makes it differ from the definition of work, which we have used before. Work does not take um, care of time. Power takes into account the amount of time needed to perform a certain amount of work. Second is the unit of power is the watt. Also joules per second can be used in this context. And the third item is that in the power law defined by, found by James Watt, power is defined as the product of current and voltage. 
And the last takeaway is that the well-known form power equals voltage times current can be easily derived from the definition of work in the electric field. So if you have a sound understanding of these concepts, power and voltage and current and also work, you are well prepared to take a look at the um, power, for example, of electrical and elect electronical devices, such as a resistor, to understand how much percent, uh, what percentage of, let's say, your battery is going to be used up by a circuit with a certain with certain properties. Let's say you have a battery of 9 volts, you have a resistor of uh, 1 kilo ohm, you uh, connect the two and then you can measure the current flow through this resistor, then you can easily compute the power consumption of this resistor, which gives you an idea of how long it will take to drain the charges in your battery. So that's one application of the power law. Also, you know how much power, electrical power, is converted into heat with this resistor. There are many applications of the power law, and we will take a close look at them in the upcoming videos. That's all for now for this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me um, one or two in the comment section down below so I can help you. Also, if you have suggestions for future videos, um, give me a comment. And if you like this video, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, have a nice day and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer. Now let's quickly summarize the major findings from this video. The first is that power describes the work being performed in a given period of time. We use the unit of what to describe power. We abbreviate uh, it with the letter W to indicate um, the unit of, of power. And thirdly, we have seen that in the power law, power is defined as the product of current and voltage. So a very simple connection between all these variables. And the last point I'd like to point out here is that the well-known form, which, which states that power is the product of voltage and current, that this form can easily be derived from the definition of work being performed in the electric field. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos I should make, leave a comment there. And now I wish you all the best. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer. Yeah.